On what was the very last night of their trip, the group had set up camp near Sandy Creek Billabong, a waterhole so serene that it seemed to defy the warning signs staked around its perimeter. Despite his experience and an area of glaring signs, it was Glenn who at this point would have a crucial lapse in judgment. A pile of mussel shells on the shore seemed to suggest that local Aboriginal women had deemed the water safe, and to add on to his growing sense of security, even a flashlight scan for crocodile eyes would yield nothing. Glenn was at this point convinced of the water safety and would give the crew the all clear. One rightly cautious backpacker would even question him three times, but Glenn would go on to reassure him that he'd been making the right call. The group, including the Von Jordan sisters, took the plunge, their laughter echoing in the night air. Andrew Waters, a British tourist, would stay ashore, engrossed in his attempt to play the Didgeri do. It was at this point that in a heartbeat, the atmosphere would shift from one of carefree jubilance to palpable dread. A sudden, horrifying realization swept over the group. Isabel was nowhere to be seen. 